for joining us this morning to our city council meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. And could you please call the roll? Adamson? Here. Gray? Here. Cheeto? Here. Lorick? Ortega? Here. Stevens? Here. Black? Here. Thank you. If you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, after which, if you would remain standing for the invocation, which will be offered by Pastor Scott Sampson, representing the Rocky Mountain Ministries. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here at this place tonight. We thank you for this great nation and fair city that we live in, have the privilege to live in. And tonight, as the business uh, part of the business meeting takes place, we ask, Lord, that you will be with each of our leaders. We thank you for them. We ask you to give them wisdom. And Lord, we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank great you. Voice. It's a great voice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll move to agenda item three is a consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion and a vote. If any one member of the council so desires, any matter listed can be moved to a separate agenda item. A, minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral reading of the minutes. At, oh, I was supposed to. I'm going to back up. <laughs> I apologize, I'm supposed to make the announcement. If you are here for agenda item six or 17, they have both been pulled from the agenda. And so I apologize, I didn't do that before I got in the middle of that. But six and 17 have been pulled from the agenda. All right, agenda item 3A, minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral reading of the minutes and approve the minutes from the following meetings, November 7, 2019, clarification and regular council meetings, December 19, 2019, clarification and regular council meeting, and January 2, 2020, clarification and regular council meeting. B, treasurer's report. Council may wish to consider the treasurer's report for December showing cash and investments as of December 31, 2019. Good evening, Bonnie. How are you? Hello. Uh, Bonnie Schrader, Deputy CFO, standing in tonight for Ashley Litton Welsh. She is our Chief Financial Officer. I'm here to present the December 31st, 2019 Treasurer's Report. If you'd like to follow along, on page one, total cash and cash equivalents for the city were $48,731,422. Long-term Investments were $4,942,870 for total cash, cash equivalents, and long-term investments of $53,674,292. <clears throat> there was an overall decrease in net change of $2,098,296 for the month of December. On page two of the report, Ashley has highlighted a couple of key receipts for the month. The Transit Rural Fund receives state grants for the fiscal year 19 and capital for fiscal year 20 in the total amount of $60,667. <clears throat> the Trans Transit Herbal Urban Fund received federal grants for November fiscal year 20 in the amount of $130,691. The remaining section of page two details the net change in cash and long-term investments for the city. Page three reports information for the city trust funds. Our trust funds had a total cash and cash equivalent balance of $1,134,583. <clears throat> Long-term investments had a balance of $3,524,985 for a combined trust fund total of cash, cash equivalents, and long-term investment balance of $4,659,568. For the change in cash and cash equivalents for the trust funds, we had cash receipts of 26, excuse me, $25,709 and a cash disbursements of $51,064, resulting in a net change in cash for a decrease of $25,354. <clears throat> this combined with long-term investments sold a capital loss and unrealized gain of $21,000 $309 had an overall net change for the trust funds in cash and long-term investment 
for a decrease of $46,663. <clears throat> Page four is a report of all the city funds ending cash balances with their respective change in cash for the month of December. Page five is a discussion and analysis report by Ashley Litton Welsh for your review. And lastly, page six of your report is a five year trend of the city's cash balances. Our general fund continues to show a strong cash position with a healthy ending cash balance of $4,747,937. We had three negative fund balances last month. The Transit Urban Fund had a negative balance pending grants. The Fleet Management Fund is negative due to interfund transfers and the CDBG Entitlement Fund is negative due to pending grants as well. So this concludes the Treasurer's Report. Any, any questions? Any questions for Bonnie? Thank you, Bonnie. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we'll move to C, Animal Shelter Advisory Board reappointment. The council may wish to confirm the Mayor's reappointment of Daniel Lenahan to serve as a member of the Animal Sur Shelter Advisory Board. Mr. Lenahan's term will begin February 2, 2020 and it will expire February 2, 2022. D, Pocatello Development Authority appointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's appointment of Heidi Adamson to, as a member of the Pocatello, Pocatello Development Authority Board represented the city of Pocatello replacing Jim Johnston. Ms. Adamson's term will, term will begin January 17, 2020 and will expire May 1, 2020. E, Pocatello Regional Airport Commission reappointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Larry Bell to continue his service as a member of the Pocatello Regional Airport Commission. Mr. Bell's term will begin February 5, 2020 and will expire February 5, 2022. F, Idaho Transportation Department Child Safety Seat Grant Police. Council may wish to approve an application to the Idaho Transportation Department in the amount of $21,599 for the purpose of purchasing and distributing child passenger safety seats by police staff and certification training and education for the police staff and if the grant is approved, authorize the mayor to accept and sign documents related to the grant. This is an annual grant and local matches in the amount of $1,100 is required which will be covered through the donations to the safety seat program. G, council decision exception to daycare facility requirement. Council may wish to adopt this decision granting April Clayson the DBA step ahead preschool an exception to Pocatello Municipal Code 5.28.110L, which requires daycare facilities to have an outdoor play area adjoining, adjoining to the or easily accessible to the proposed business location at 185 Jefferson Street, Pocatello. H. Council decision, Creekside District Division One extension. Council may wish to adopt this decision, granting the request from Scott and Nicole Seibert and Mike and Kathy Seibert and Iron Eagle LLC for an extension on the preliminary plat approval for Creekside District Division One. The extension shall expire on March 27, 2020. I, council decision, Juniper Reserve Division Three final plat approval. Council may wish to adopt its decision approving the final plat for Juniper Reserve Division 3, which subdivides approximately 8.18 acres of land into 13 residential lots, subject to conditions. The property is located north of Juniper Reserve Division 2. J, Council decision Lackey's Lots Short plat approval. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving the short plat for Lackey's Lots, which subdivides approximately 1.12 acres of land into three residential lots and an additional four lot four, which shall be dedicated to the city as right of way subject to conditions. The property is located at 2651 South Grand Avenue. Mr. Mayor? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I would move to approve the consent agenda, agenda number, thir number three. Number three. Second. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Stevens. And could you please call the roll? Uh, Cheatham? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Gray? Yes. Ortega? Yes. 
Thank you. Agenda item four, uh, communication of proclamations. We have no proclamations, and so we will move to agenda item five, which is a calendar review. Council may wish to take this opportunity to inform other council members of upcoming meetings and events that should be called to their attention. February 6th at 5.30 p.m. will be a clarification meeting. February 6th at 6 p.m. will be a regular city council meeting. Other events, city offices will be closed January 20 for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. However, garbage and recycle pickups will be on schedule. Winter programs are happening at Zoo Idaho. Contact the zoo office for more information. And Citizens Police Academy is now accepting applications. Contact the police department for more information. Uh, snow removal reminder, when, cleared, when clearing sidewalks and or driveways, please do not place the snow in the streets. It becomes a driving hazard. I just might put a plug in for the Citizens Ac Police Academy. Every person I know that has gone through that has thoroughly enjoyed it. And so if you're interested, it is a, a, great, a great program. And so I've been through that, and it's well worth the time. Well worth the time. So don't hesitate to do so. Uh, let's see, agenda item six was pulled, an alcohol license denial was pulled, and so we'll jump to agenda item number seven is public hearing, subdivision ordinance modifications. This time it's been set aside for council to hear comments from the public regarding proposed changes to the subdivision ordinance, municipal code title 16. The following public hearing, or following the public hearing on November 13, 2019, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the proposed changes. I declare the public hearing opened. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Uh, my name is Carl Anderson. I'm with the City of Pocatello Planning Department. Uh, you have before you a series of proposed, or a series of proposed changes to Title 16, the subdivision ordinance. On June 13th, 2019, staff brought the proposed changes to City Council for a work session and received direction to proceed with the changes to Title 16. Uh, after the initial City Council work session, staff identified 18 local developers, engineers, and architects to review the proposed changes. Of the 18, eight agreed to review the changes, and two written comments were received regarding the changes uh, to Title 16. Staff took the comments into consideration when preparing the amendments that you have before you. Uh, a hearing was held before the Planning Zone, Zoning Commission on November 13th, 2019, after which the Commission recommended approval to the City Council. All notice and requirements had been met and no written comment uh, pertaining to Title 16 has been received since the time of noticing. The subdivision ordinance was last amendment, amended in 2016, which modified sections of the code, including the short plat process. The addition and the addition of the property line adjustment and also added the requirement for pre-application review for all subdivision applications. Since that time, and after working with the ordinance on a variety of subdivision applications, staff has identified multiple items that need to be addressed in order to improve the function of the ordinance and to better serve the purpose of the subdivision regulations. A summary of the proposed changes include the following. Uh, number one, alter the pre-application review process, making the pre-application optional and at staff discretion. Some applications, uh, this is because some applications simply do not necessarily benefit from the requirement for pre-application. Um, there is a significant difference between a 40 lot uh, subdivision versus a two lot short plat. Uh, so this allows for some staff discretion at this and hopefully uh, improve the process. Uh, originally, staff proposed to increase the traffic, uh, the requirement for a traffic impact study for a preliminary plat. However, based on comment received, staff is recommending that the requirement for a traffic impact study not be increased uh, in order to allow time for additional research to be done. Additionally, staff is proposing to allow for some flexibility at the discretion of the Public Works Department staff, um, specifically regarding the traffic impact study. Uh, this, would, uh, this may be weighed by the Public Works Director or designee upon the receipt of a traffic analysis, which would be included as part of the application. Uh, number three, modify the request to the public hearing process to align with Idaho State Code 67-6521. Uh, number four, standardize the application requirements for preliminary plat and final plat in order to improve the consistency of both application requirements and the processing of the preliminary and final plat review. Uh, this would include the reduction in the number of full-size plats to be submitted at the time of preliminary plat and also add the requirement for a PDF. Um, number five, remove the requirement for a surety bond to be released by city council upon the acceptance of public infrastructure and improvements. Uh, when applicable, um, this would remove the requirement for additional meetings 
Um, and to clarify, that would still go through the process with our Public Works Department staff um, and would be um, at the Public Works Director's uh, discretion. Uh, number six, minor, minor formatting modifications uh, throughout the ordinance, uh, which includes deleting and consolidating duplicate definitions, correcting text, uh, renumber of section 16.28, and adding some flexibility where applicable to allow public works director's designee uh, rather than the director themselves uh, and add some flexibility and consistency with our review process. A detailed analysis is contained within our staff report. Um, the proposed changes were reviewed by City of Pocatello Legal Department and no substantial concerns were raised. Uh, following public hearing, the council may wish to adopt the Planning Zoning Commission's recommendation and direct staff to prepare an ordinance containing the proposed changes. Uh, with that, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to stand for questions. Okay. Questions? What, what were the, the comments made by the three who chose to comment out of the 18? So one of the comments um, is double counted um, for 16 and 17. Um, that comment uh, basically addressed that there was no concerns over the changes as proposed. The other comment uh, was specific to the traffic impact study. Uh, the initial proposal was that a traffic impact study be required when um, a new subdivision as part of a subdivision series um, would trigger that 100 vehicle trips. Um, the concern was that that would unfairly um, put the burden on, let's say, the property developer of division three. Um, so staff has taken that back to look at that to see if there's other ways that we can address that. Thank you. Any other questions? Do we have any other correspondence that we have not seen? Uh, not to 60. Have we seen any in the clerk's office? Nothing further. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Then we would look for any testimony in support of the application. Any testimony uncommitted to the application. Any testimony opposed to the application. Thank you, Tayson. General Delivery, Pocatello, Idaho, 83201. I attended these meetings and um, the same thing was being done in Chubbuck. And a concern I had, whether it applies to this or both, was the effort to be able to streamline supposedly the process of permits and um, plats and things like that by bypassing the approval of the city council with go giving sole control to the mayor or public works director, which I am totally opposed to. Um, that is a violation of constitutional law. The legislative body is the city council who has that authority. It should not be given to the public works director solely to the mayor unless there's a tie vote that needs to be broken. Um, this is more UN power struggle stuff here going on. So stick to constitutional law as we've been given. Thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Any others opposed to the application? Okay, then I don't see any, unless Carl just wanted to get up and say some more things, I, we're good. Then I declare the public hearing closed. We'll move to agenda item number eight, is the public hearing zoning ordinance modifications. This time has been set aside for council to hear comments from the public regarding proposed changes to the zoning ordinance, municipal code title 17, Following the public hearing on November 13, 2019, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the proposed changes. I declare the public hearing open. Uh, Carl Anderson again for the record. Um, the proposed changes to Title 17, our zoning regulations followed a similar process to our subdivision ordinance. We packaged them together. So these changes were brought to the same work session on June 13th, 2019, um, after which City Council did direct staff to pursue the proposed changes. Um, the same 18 individuals were identified. Um, the same 18 uh, individuals agreed to provide comment. Um, we did have two written comments received. Um, one of those, again, being double counted. Um, the other comment um, to summarize was largely supportive of the proposed changes with some additional um, items that staff uh, could consider. I think it's on page two of your executive summary. Um, basically looking at the original town site in greater detail, um, considering uh, reducing parking requirements to align with what's being proposed in the warehouse district um, and uh, original town site for our historic preservation overlay. Um, and also to look at the requirements for minimum lot size. Um, 
staff acknowledge those comments and I those kind of those fall into that category of the items that we'd like to um, evaluate further and uh, commit some study to um, at this time uh, uh, no uh, excuse me a public hearing was held before the Planning and Zoning Commission on November 13 uh, 2019 after which the Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval of the changes uh, all noticing requirements have been addressed and we did receive one written comment on uh, title 17 or zoning regulations uh, which I'll address uh, towards the end. Um, the current zoning ordinance was last adopted in 2008 uh, during a full repeal and replace. Uh, the comprehensive plan was also last updated in 2015. And since that time, staff has been working on a series of updates to the zoning ordinance to uh, better align the zoning ordinance with the current comprehensive plan. Um, it, these updates also uh, are update sections of code to accomplish the following. Um, one. Uh, consolidate is similar consolidate similar code sections to make the sections more user friendly um, and remove inconsistency um, all use and bulk placement requirements are now in one place all development standards are now in one place and this would allow for a more linear review uh, of the zoning districts for both staff and members of the public uh, to uh, remove our neighborhood commercial zoning district from title 17 uh, this is because we do not currently have property uh, with this zoning designation um, and our recommendation is to remove that section from code. Uh, number three, uh, remove the land use exception process from the code as this application is no longer necessary. Um, A, the land use exception is specific to bypass the conditional use permit, variance, and sign exception process in the interest of time, complexity of application, and for the convenience of the applicant. Uh, this was put in place when these types of applications required two public hearings. Um, currently, each only requires a single public hearing, and the applicant is able to appeal that decision to the City Council. Um, one correction to the staff report, I believe. Uh, the land use exception is still in the fee schedule. However, an application is not has not been processed since 2012. Um, number four, uh, minor formatting modifications throughout the ordinance, including deleting duplicate, not applicable definitions, correcting text, uh, renumbering, renumbering of multiple sections of the code as detailed throughout. <clears throat> number five, changes to, uh, to some of the land use process. Um, A, align the conditional use permit uh, to Idaho Code 676512, uh, specifically regarding the conditions which may be attached to a uh, special use permit. Um, B, additionally, it was originally proposed that the administrative variance uh, be required to meet the requirement of a variance as the current process allows for what is in effect um, a loophole for applicants um, who own all properties adjacent to the minor variance. Um, staff has gone back and reworked this somewhat. Um, this has also been, uh, staff has gone back to rework this somewhat um, as an administrative variance. So this would not require all adjacent property owners to sign off, but the applicant would still need to submit um, essentially a minor variance application. Um, so it would be the same fee uh, to staff demonstrating that it would not generate any, um, jeopardize the life safety of the adjacent property owners. Um, additionally, staff feels that this more closely aligns um, with the intent of a variance application, uh, which are based on the uh, undue hardship. Uh, number six, land use change, change requirements. Um, a, accessory dwelling units would no longer require a conditional use permit, provided that all requirements for uh, an accessory dwelling unit are met. Currently, all accessory dwelling units are required to have a conditional use permit granted in addition to meeting the standards for the ADU. Uh, this would remove that step for the conditional use permit. Uh, number B, a change to the original town site overlay, uh, setting the height at the height permitted under the zoning district rather than the block face average. Uh, this is an issue of enforcement of building permits as we receive them. Um, C, include the warehouse district and new development to the central commercial zoning district uh, for meeting current parking standards. Um, basically, uh, as a development occurs in the CC zoning district um, in an existing building, they would not be required to meet parking standards. Staff's recommending that this also include the warehouse district and also include new development um, to incentivize and fill development in those areas. <laughs> Uh, finally, the modification to Section 1702170K uh, will require a s correction to city code uh, to the city sign code. Uh, staff has reviewed this with our legal department, um, and no concerns were raised. Um, two items I just want to highlight really quick. Also, um, we are recommending that the definition per household uh, be modified to increase from uh, three unrelated individuals to four, um, which would impact boarding houses. Um, 
they would all boarding houses will still only be permitted in the zones where they are permitted and would not affect the application process for that to address the public comment received one item specific to major event and entertainment centers staff acknowledges that it would be better to look at a measure that is more objective rather than calling them out as major entertainment centers staff's recommendation at this time would be to consider that in the future and allow some analysis be done to identify what that measure what the appropriate measure would be for that the second concern and I'm summarizing is related to note 20 under the use table under 1703 500 this is essentially the same note that we have existing for those uses specific in this our commercial zoning districts with the addition of the sentence calling it out all others shall be conditional use permit and CG RCP and CC zoning districts there was some concern that this would require a water booster station to receive a conditional use permit that is not that would not be the case it would still be part of the water line infrastructure for that all most requirements have been met and that was the one comment received but I'm happy to stand for questions before then well is there any questions thank you you mentioned we had two correspondence and you covered those were there any others that you know of not that I'm aware any in the clerk's office okay thank you thank you we would look for any testimony supporting the application any testimony uncommitted oh we got one well I yeah I'm moving okay Mike Shiver at 1665 Polk Town Fish Road and I read through the ordinance and looked like it kind of made things a little more efficient and I support the application the only thing I can think of is on that major entertainment center that what I noticed before and I was thinking a good quantitative definition of major would be 500 parking spaces and maybe where it says large group of spectators you might use more than 2,000 no size the facility so you can do without and not have any more impact than another typical commercial general facility that's it super thank you any others in support of the application I'm gonna go slower this time Mike okay any uncommitted to the application any opposed to the application Nikki taste and general delivery Polk Hotel Idaho 83201 I'm all for organized development and have things look nice I am opposed to the development standards and things like that that have put been put under international code because those have decreased the level of quality as well as safety and so I am strongly opposed that anything still remains under those codes and also as an act of treason since that's putting a foreign power over u.s. trade industry and safety of lives as well as home ownership and I know a lot is in zoning to be PUD zoning mixed-use zoning creative community zoning and I'm strongly against those as well because it's more lazy fair development whoever comes in with the money wants to put in whatever they want can easily change the zone and so if you have a comprehensive plan and lay out a city the way it should be with proper ordinances and how you want people to live and be safe and where they're living including whether it's children playing or people going back and forth from homes to work I'm seeing a lot of fruit basket upset development as just an example over in Chubbuck behind Kay's Cove on East Chubbuck Road and Highline putting 11 fourplexes right there behind that accessing on the East Chubbuck right before light or on to Whitaker and then there's more development and so there's a lot going on pushing for high-density housing government utilities government transportation skinny narrow streets and with the ability to have commercial or other trade in those same environments and I know how I grew up I was raised in a great little town where there were specific places where children and homes were and the schools and the industry and trade were separate 
and i could go anywhere i want to my baby carriage and on my bicycle and so could my friends or children can't do that today and so i call on you to return back to how america was founded and how we developed and get back to those standards it's not america growing up in high density housing independent people need to be able to garden have a yard to raise their children in share it in the name of jesus George commandment is Zion. thank you uh, any others opposed to the application Okay, then, Carl, okay, then I will, uh, I declare the public hearing closed. We'll move to agenda item number nine, public hearing, auction of four city-owned buildings. This time has been set aside for council to hear comments from the public regarding the auction of four city-owned properties, which were declared surplus on December 5, 2019, and are prepared to be disposed of through a public auction. I declare the public hearing open. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jeff Mansfield, Public Works Director and City Engineer. <clears throat> On November 14, 2019, we presented four properties to City Council for consideration of sale in accordance with Idaho Code 50-1401. These properties include the Survey Annex located at 1428 North 3rd Avenue, which has only been used for storage since 2012, the Sanitation Building located at 1121 South 2nd Avenue, the Street Building located at 1080 South 1st Avenue and the Street Department storage lot located on the 1100 block of South 1st Avenue. These, pro these properties have recently been vacated due to the purchase of the Public work Works Annex on Garrett Way. On December 5th, 2019, the Council declared the properties a surplus and set the minimum reserve prices based on appraised values. De de direction was also given to staff to procure a contract with primetime auctions. This public hearing is the final step before moving to the public auctions and no comments were received by staff on this public hearing. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have at this time. Any questions, Council? For... Okay, thank you. And we would, oh, have you heard any, got any correspondence by chance? No. Have we seen any correspondence in the clerk's office no. on this agenda item? Okay, thank you. Do we look for any support, any testimony supporting the application? Any testimony uncommitted to the application? Any testimony opposed to the application? Andy Moldenhauer, 7938 West Pocatello Creek Road, Pocatello, Idaho. Um, I'm not sure what the review process for declaring these property surplus was as far as um, other departments uses or needs. Um, for example, with the fire department, we have several pieces of apparatus that are stored outside and they get damaged by the sun, the weather, and also by, by pests, by animals. And one of these properties could have been used to house this apparatus and prevent this damage from happening and protect the city's investment in these pieces of apparatus. Um, additionally, it could be used to house the fire department mechanic and make his job a little bit more seamless. So, okay. Thank you. Any others opposed to the application? We can take <coughs> general delivery Pocatell Idaho 83201. That was one of my questions is what was really done to determine if these were really surplus and also how the value was uh, um, come to and also where were those funds going to be going and after they were auctioned and I am opposed to um, primetime auction being given that contract I don't know if it went out as a bid process or not I didn't remember what he said about that um, but I know that they have a history of being low bid but I think it said in the documents that you have a minimum bid right that's a question I have um, so anyway, those are the reasons why I'm opposed. If they're surplus, yes, we need to auction them, get fair value with a minimum bid, and validation where those funds are going to be going. Thanks in the name. Thank you. Any others opposed to the application? Okay, then we'll give Jeff a call and kind of put him on the spot here. <laughs> Uh, 
So there were three, a couple questions asked there. Um, the determination for surplus, what was the review process? That, so, um, as I mentioned, we, the, these properties were brought to a, a city council work session on November 14, 2019. And then again, back to a city council uh, regular meeting on December 5th, 2019. And, and conversations were had with, with council during those meetings. I know we had had discussions long before that. We had had discussions about purchasing the the, the public works annex building on uh, Garrett Way, and uh, at clear back then, I think we had 11 or 12 meetings on that. And yeah, this was always the plan: is to go ahead and sell these properties to to help re replace the reserves that were used to to pay for the public works annex. And so that it was always part of the plan to do do so. Right. And so okay. That um, that answers uh, both questions, the, the determination and what are the funds used for. And then uh, the minimum bid, uh, there was a question on a minimum bid. Is there a minimum bid on this? And uh, On the auction <clears throat> house? Yeah, on yeah. all uh, the properties, the, the four properties. Is yes, there? yes, there is minimum bids established on these. And it was based on the appraisals that were done. Most of the appraisals that were done on these properties were done back in 2017. And so council felt like there should be some adjustment there for inflation and for increase in property values representative from those uh, uh, appraisal values. Perfect. Any other questions for Jeff while we've got him up here? I just had a comment for further clarification. Sure. Is now an appropriate time sure. to say it? Or, okay. Absolutely. Um, well, for any people who may be wondering or who weren't in some of those previous meetings um, that we've had at work sessions or discussions about our fleet department, I just think it's important to kind of clarify and point out that we knew going into it with the fleet department that there would be an initial expense for that building, which is the former Western States CAP building and Correct. is now our public works annex. And so that was going to be a big expense, but we knew we'd be able to recoup some of that expense by selling these buildings. And also the point was with our fleet department to recognize some efficiencies and to ultimately save money. So it wasn't to spend money, but it's to save money. And I also think it's um, a good thing to note that by selling these properties, um, they will go back on the tax rolls. When the city owns them, they're Tax they're not paying property tax, but now when they get sold to a private owner, they will be going back on the tax rolls. So I actually wondered if we could have just some comments about our fleet department and some of the efficiencies that have been realized so far, just for okay, it's anyone been a, that is I'll interested. Take it's been a short time. I getting, actually have a question. Hold on, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. So are there, is this the extent of all the surplus properties? properties? Um, as far as I'm aware, <laughs> we're, we're actually going through a process right now of trying to identify all of the city owned properties. We're putting that into our GIS. Um, but as far as um, ones that we're going to we're going to surplus, these are the, the extent of it right now. So I was just wondering about, you know, Andy's concerns, you know, the city's invested in, you know, firefighting equipment and, and, and gear and and if they're if if there are other properties that could potentially be used for that, then? Um, yeah, I, I'm not completely aware of what properties are owned by other departments. Uh, like I said, we're, we're in that process of identifying all the properties right now, so I, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Yeah. Any other questions before we, Jeff leaves? Thank you. Tom. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tom Kirkman, Deputy Public Works Director, City of Pocatello. So when we undertook this project, part of the, the plan was to combine the street department and sanitation department in one facility. Um, we have been seeing some pretty uh, uh, awesome returns on that because we've been able to not duplicate service. One small example is our sanitation department needed a big uh, a printing machine, a large well, the street department had one. When we moved together, we were able to only need the one. You know, these little costs, we can go down uh, the list. We're making lists as we do this, but we're seeing huge benefits just from combining street and sanitation together. As far as fleet goes right now, <clears throat> I, can, I can give you just one example. We're, we're billing out monthly. We just billed October a few weeks ago. We've got November billed out. And to give you an idea, sanitation department last year 
was spending $43,000 a month on maintenance. And the bill we set them for the month of October is $21,000 on maintenance. So we're seeing some huge return on that. And what it's, what it's boiling down to is instead of the sanitation department paying an or a mechanic every day, now they're only paying for that mechanic when they need that mechanic. And we're able to, to move those forces around. Um, we're also um, leveraging with our, with our parts department. Um, January 21st, the, the IBS group's coming in to establish the internal parts store. Um, we've been spot checking them for the last six months and the city pays a, a reduced cost for parts uh, from what a, a regular person pays over the counter. And it's usually 25 to 30 percent. We get a really good deal from the local parts houses. The NAPA, the IBS crew, has lowered those prices by an additional 25 to 30 percent on the checks that we've been checking on that. So as soon as we get this park store in, it only services our facility. Um, it interacts, so their software interacts with our technician <coughs> software. So there's no paperwork. We get one bill at the end of the month. There's no processing. Um, we're seeing just huge benefits. I mean, I could go on for an hour if you'd like, but you probably don't want me to. Mm -hmm. We'd like to hear about the savings, but we don't want you to do it for an hour. <laughs> Any other questions for Tom? Thank you. <clears throat> and I declare the public hearing closed. We'll move on to, <clears throat> excuse me, agenda item number 10. Final plat Crestview Cove subdivision. Ryan Satterfield, represented by Rocky Mountain Engineering and Surveying, has submitted a final plat application mm -hmm. requesting to subdivide 2.66 acres mm -hmm. into 11 residential lots to be known as Crest Crestview Cove subdivision. The proposed subdivision is located south of Monson Street and north of Crestview Estates Division 1. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I would move approval of agenda item number 10, the final plan for Crestview Cove subdivision. Second. Thank you, have Mr. Satterfield, a question or two before he sure. before we vote? Sure. Brian, when do you expect to see this subdivision, this piece of it, out, done? Our plan is to, um, I'll state my name, Ryan Satterfield, uh, Satterfield Realty 3141 Trevor Street. Our plan is to uh, initiate construction on the street infrastructure as soon as weather permits, um, and then it will likely take us uh, uh, two to three months to get the street infrastructure in, uh, after which we'll be able to start the homes there. And so this summer we'll be building homes there. So completion next year? So completion of all of the homes, yeah, over the next probably 18 months that, uh, before we have it, uh, where every building is built and lawns are in and all that. Thank you. Yep. Super. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Adamson. And would you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Bray? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 11, bid acceptance fire department. Council may wish to accept recommendations of staff and award a bid to the lowest responsive bidder, federal resources in the amount of $51,592.80. For a handheld Fourier transformer infrared FTIR chemical analyzer to be used in the fire department, if, if accepted, the council may also wish to authorize the mayor to sign the necessary documents subject to legal department review. The purchase is to provide for the hazmat team to quickly, accurately identify unknown chemicals per the industry standard, and that the purchase include training for hazmat team members in its operation and maintenance. General funds in the amount of $20,000 have been sorry. obtained. Oh, I'm sorry. Grant funds in the amount of $20,000 have been obtained for the purchase Funds for the remaining balance of $31,592.80 for the proposed purchase have been budgeted in the fire department's fiscal year 2020 budget. Councilman, Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the uh, lowest responsive bid from federal resources and that uh, we, uh, if, ex if accepted, the council authorizes you to sign the necessary document subject to legal department review. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. 
And would you please? Could we have a member of the fire department come up and explain to our viewing audience what this is about and how often it's used? Absolutely. <clears throat> Mike Williams, Battalion Chief Public Health Fire Department. Um, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have, Council Member. Could you explain to the viewing public what this piece of equipment is for, how it's used, and how often? I'll do my best. <laughs> That's all we can ask. Um, so basically, there are, uh, there are different types of uh, light refraction that, that uh, bounces off the chemicals. Um, and the way it returns back and is red is how we determine that uh, signature of the light return in the spectrum is how we determine what that is. Every chemical out there has a specific signature or a pretty close approximate, close enough that we can do it. This particular um, purchase has a 10,000 chemical library. So there's 10,000 chemicals out there that you can see. The issue that we have with why we need two different pieces of equipment is because in some cases, um, Raman or FTIR, this is the FTIR IR that we're talking about, um, they have problems with different types of chemical structures. Uh, so you need to overlap uh, the two analyzing pieces of equipment so that you get the right answer. Um, for example, FDR has trouble with water-based stuff, whereas the ROM technology has trouble with uh, crystalline such substances, as I recall. Um, they're used every time the hazmat team is called out, pretty much, for a unknown chemical identification. I couldn't give you the exact number of times. Um, but uh, I'm sure we could get that to you at a later date and time if you, if you need it. Uh -huh. Since you haven't had this piece of equipment, what have you been doing in the interim? We previously had uh, what was called the Hazmat ID 360 uh, to do this, to perform this action on, for the FDIR uh, laser. But it's now become unsupported by the manufacturer. Um, no more repairs, no more parts. And so this is to replace that equipment that we used to have. That equipment is approximately 25 years old, I think, maybe 20. You I, mentioned, could be, I could be wrong on that. You mentioned training. How many team members will be trained in the use of this? Um, all the team members will be trained. Right now, that sits at about uh, 22 people. Um, we'll, we'll get them all into a four-hour class when it comes in. Thank you. Or as many will show up. <laughs> <laughs> how, long can, how long do you expect this to be supported by the manufacturer, this technology, this, you know? Um, the True Defender just came out in this last two years, so mm -hmm. I would expect a similar lifespan on the equipment that we saw with the Hazmat ID 360, okay. which I believe was around 20 years. Okay. And I, I can't say the exact date that we were making it, but I think our purchase was around 20 years ago. What happens if you can't identify the chemical with something like this? There's a, a third step we can go through. Uh, these are both uh, to try and get it done quickly. Um, there's another step we can take that's called the HASCAT ID kit, and it's a, it's a 10 to 20 step uh, process where um, you combine it with different chemicals, you see it'll burn, and it's, it's, it's much more laborious, and, and which means if this is on the highway or something like that, much longer amount of time that you're shut down. So it's a chemical analysis instead of a spectrographic analysis? Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, they're, they're both a chem, uh, an analysis of, of an unknown chemical. Um, all three methods are just one's based on light refraction and the other is, you know, just like you do in a chem lab. So without this tool, you would have a crew waiting to figure out what you got to deal with? Oh, yeah. It, uh, we, we've had to do it before, um, and it, it just takes quite a bit longer. Which is, is not a problem if we're off in a parking lot in the middle of nowhere, but if it's on a street or somewhere where we're uh, in, impacting the city's uh, traffic lanes, it's a problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we have a motion by Bray and a second by Cheatham. And could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Agenda item 12, bid acceptance agreement, sanitary sewer point repairs. Council may wish to consider recommendations of staff and follow, following the request 
regarding the 2020 sanitary sewer point repairs. A, accept the lowest responsive bid on December 20, 2019 from Star Corporation in the amount of $62,690 for the total bid. If the bid is accepted, B, authorize the mayor's execution of the agreement between the city of Pocatello and Star Corporation in the amount of $62,690 for the 2020 sanitary sewer point repairs pro project subject to legal department review. The project includes nine locations of sanitary sewer lines in need of repair to restore proper drainage and prepare for the 2020 sanitary sewer line project. If approved, the work will be begin February, mid February and will be completed within 30 days of the start date. Funds for the project are available in the WPC fiscal year 2020 capital budget. Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, accept the uh, bid agreement uh, with the, for the sanitary sewer point repairs and the amount of $62,690 and that we authorize the execution of this with the mayor uh, and uh, authorize the legal department to review. Second. Is that Ortega? Second. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you. Uh, we have a motion by Bray and a second by Ortega. Ruth, could you please? Uh, I even looked at you. I almost said Connie. <laughs> <laughs> and could you please call the roll? Bray. Yes. Ortega. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Cheetah. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Ortega. Yes. 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 Thank you. Agenda item 13, bid acceptance agreement, Ross Park Aquatic Complex Pool Resurfacing. Council may wish to consider the recommendations of staff for the following request regarding the Ross Park Aquatic Complex pool resurfacing project for the zero depth slash, slash splash pool and lazy river pool. Accept the lowest responsive bid received on January 6, 2020 from Davies uh, Aquacam Supply Company DBA Mastercraft Pool and Spa in the amount of $148,251.75. And if the bid is accepted, B, authorize the mayor's execution of the agreement between the city of Pocatello and Davis Aquacam Supply Company, DBA Mastercraft Pool and Spa, in the amount of $148,251.75 for the Ross Park Aquatic Complex Zero Depth Splash Pool and Lazy River Pool resurfacing project subject to legal department review. Services provided in the project include preparation of existing surface using high pressure water blasting and chipping off all loose material, application of multi-use or multi-coat scratch coat systems as bonding agent, uh, pumping of plaster, troweling and smooth hard finish and uh, certified startup in the and monitoring procedure if approved the work will begin in late february and will be completed with uh, or before 86 calendar days from the start date funds for the project have been budgeted and are available in the parks and recreation fiscal year 2020 fund 78 capital improvement fund budget Council President Adamson. Mayor, I move that we accept the bid and authorize you to execute the necessary agreement <coughs> subject to legal review. Second. We have a motion by President Adamson and a second by Bray. And could you please call the roll? Adamson? Yes. Bray? Yes. Cheetah? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 14, grant application Idaho Parks and Recreation Foundation. Council may wish to approve submission of the following grants and if awarded, authorize acceptance of the grants and authorize the mayor to sign subject to legal department review documents related to the grants. The local match for all three grants will be staff and volunteer time. A, Cousett Creek Trailhead RTP grant in the amount of $19,550. The grant will be used to regrade and enlarge the existing trailhead by about 50% and install fencing and uh, and inter 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 interpretive signage. Thank you. 
uh, about history, historic water res reservoir features adjacent to the trailhead, local in-kind match is $5,524 for project design and technical support. B, Coochie Creek Trailhead and Access Road o ORMV grant in the amount of $27,100. Their grant will be used to regrade and enlarge the existing trailhead by about 50% to regrade the road access and install fencing and inter Interpret interpretive <laughs> signage about historic water reservoir features adjacent to the trailhead. Local in-kind match is $5,908 for project design and technical support. C, water trail. RTP grant in the amount of $13,000. The grant will be used to install two new access points to the Portniff River by Sacagawea Park, City Water Shop, and the Aberzuski Trailhead. Directional and safety signage will also be installed as part of the grant. The local in-kind match is $3,284 for project design and technical support. Mr. Ray. Yes, Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, approve the uh, application for these grants. Also identify that there were some minor corrections in terms of the numbers that you <coughs> used. And that if these uh, grants are approved, we allow you to sign the documents pertinent to them, subject to legal department review. Second. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Adamson. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Can we ask Hannah Sanger to come up and talk about why these changes are necessary, please? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Hannah Sanger, Science and Environment Administrator. Uh, yes, in this uh, grant application, I made a couple map errors, um, and Councilman Cheatham caught them uh, related to our local match. Um, and so there's a couple uh, wording changes have been uh, made in the grant related to that as well um, to bring the match down. So I mean the, the applications, what the change may be. What, what are the, the applications for? Oh, I thought you said what the errors were. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the applications are for the Cusick Creek Trailhead. Um, currently, uh, the access road is really bumpy if you go up there, and uh, the trailhead is reaching capacity, and so be enlarging it, regrading it. Um, and we've got these great historic water reservoir features up there, and so they're starting to get a bit of graffiti, and the hope would be that if we get some interpretive signage installed, that might, uh, one, it would uh, maybe minimize graffiti use, but also I get a call about once a month of somebody saying, I think you might know the answer to what is up there, and I say, yes, I do. Um, so I'd like to share that knowledge, and I'm happy to keep answering answering questions um, from people, but hopefully that will share the knowledge better than just people calling me. The sec, the third, and the first two grants are the same thing um, with the B adding in uh, the improving the access road, and that's just restrictions on the grants. Um, and we can only get one of the two, A and B. C is for a water trail, um, and so we've been working with the Portneuf River Vision to improve uh, the Portneuf River and resources and uh, increase use of it and last year we saw use explode which was super exciting and so we need to continue to provide more access points as people continue to use it and so what we're going to be doing is moving downstream of the city um, with two new spots. Uh, we got a grant this past year for a location up um, at the Gap on BLM property and we'll be making some improvements at Edson Victor, Taysom Rotary Park and Centennial uh, this spring, summer, fall. Um, and uh, so hopefully uh, we get this water trail grant and can keep to just marching our way downstream um, and then return to uh, bigger projects. So. When are these grants expected to be acted upon? To, um, we will hear about the grants in July um, and then I have not, we have not gotten the money from for our projects for this coming year yet and so we're um, slowly slogging our way through some grant regulations right now um, and are finding about additional review work. Do you expect probably next year then something would happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ideally we'll do the BLM projects um, this summer, but we, <coughs> at this point with the review, I'm, uh, it'll be in the next year. Good. So other questions about these? Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Okay, we have a motion by Bray and a second by Adamson. And could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Adamson? 
Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Steven? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 15, TAP grant applications, construction of multi-use pathways. Council may wish to approve submission of the following grants and if awarded, authorize acceptance of the grants and authorize the mayor to sign subject to, subject to legal department review documents related to the grants. A, Terry Street to Center Street. TAP grant pr project application in the amount of $456,330 for fiscal year 2021 local 7.34 percent match in the amount of $36,147 will come from the Pocatello or Port of Greenway Foundation. Total project cost estimate is $492,477 and the city of Pocatello will have full ownership of the trail upon completion and B Monta Vista Drive to Pocatello Creek Road. TAP grant project application in the amount of $499,794 for fiscal year 2022 local 7.34% 7 uh, 7 match in the amount of $39,206 will come from the Port of Greenway Foundation. Total project cost estimate is $539,000 and the City of Pocatello will have full ownership of the trail upon completion. Council President Adamson. Mayor, I move that we authorize um, submission of the grants and that we further authorize you to um, sign any necessary documents related to the grant subject to legal review. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Ca Council President Adamson and a second by Cheatham. I need somebody to tell me what a TAP grant is. I mean, where does it originate? I, th I think I have an idea, but well, yeah. just the acronym, I can't answer it. Dan. I'm Dan Harrelson with Portman Greenway Foundation. Uh, TAP grant is a uh, program under the Idaho Transportation Department, which is Transportation Alternatives Program, which is uh, alternative transportation, non-motorized transportation. So it's bicycle and pedestrian transportation. And they fund uh, projects up to $500,000. Could these be bridle paths? Pardon me? Could these be bridle paths? I don't think we prohibit bridle paths. They'll be asphalt paved. What, what are our chances of landing two grants this size? Uh, statewide, I believe there is about $33 million available. Um, it, we submitted draft applications earlier this season, uh, and there were 70 applications. So I, I, I guess the short answer is I think they're pretty good. Probably 80% chance. That's great. Good. Thank you. So we have a motion by Council President Adamson and a second by Cheatham. And could you please call the roll? Adamson? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Bray? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Steven? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 16, grant application libraries transform communities engagement grant. Council may wish to approve submission of a grant to the American Libraries Association in the amount of $2,000 for the Marshall Public Library Arts and Community Ticket ACT program and if awarded, authorize acceptance of the grants, authorize the mayor to sign subject to legal department review documents related to the grants. The program provides community members with opportunities to check out tickets to community and cultural events such as symphony, theater, and ballet performances. There is no local match required. <clears throat> Councilman Bray. Mr. Mayor, I move that we uh, grant uh, the authority to apply for these grant applications and that we uh, authorize you to sign the necessary documents subject to legal department review. Second. I'm going to give it to Stevens. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It, was, it was, was it Ortega? Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to give it to Stevens. I'm sorry. You can't. You two have got to spit She was going to say yes. She was going to say second. The library. We, <laughs> That's fine. We have a motion by Bray and a second by Ortega. I apologize. And could you please call the roll? Bray? Yes. Ortega? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 17, as a reminder, has been pulled from the 
the agenda, so we'll move to agenda item 18 is discussion items. This time has been set aside to hear discussion items not listed on the agenda. Items which appear somewhere else on the agenda will not be discussed at this time. The council is not allowed to take any official action at this meeting on matters brought forward under this agenda item. Items will either be referred to the appropriate staff or scheduled on a subs subsequent agenda. You must sign in at the start of the meeting in order to be recognized. As a reminder, there's a total of 15 minutes for this agenda item and three minutes per person. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Alan Dukes. Uh, my name, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. My name is Alan Dukes. I live at 2455 Shaler Place. Um, I, I am here tonight to speak on, uh, two weeks ago you gave a State of the City address to a lot of folks in here as well as to the Idaho State Journal. I'd like to point out some facts that are available from the U.S. Census.gov. Um, you also highlighted the fact that it was important that every citizen in the community um, take part in the census, and I also believe that as well. Um, uh, city of Pocatello unemployment rate is currently 5%. Um, state of Idaho, 2.9. Uh, uh, city of Pocatello poverty level, 20.2%. Uh, state of Idaho, 14.5. Uh, median ho household income, Pocatello, 42979 uh, point of fact here, in 2011, it was $42,404. Um, the state of Idaho, 50985 I think each one of you has a lofty uh, uh, work agenda this coming year, and um, I just don't see uh, the, how the city is doing so well when one in five individuals that you meet in the city of Pocatello is living in, uh, below poverty. And I'd just like to hopefully get some of your uh, thoughts on vision for a way forward because clearly obviously the last eight years have not worked uh, that's all i have thank you and alan i'm happy to discuss with you this isn't the forum to do so and so we don't have time for it but i'm happy to definitely discuss with you and go over any of those numbers that that you have because there's definitely <coughs> some numbers that are crossed and and some stuff so I'm happy to have those discussions with you. Thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for participating with us. And Council, I am grateful and thank you for your work today. And with that, we are adjourned.